Let's, let's go to the phone right now. Let's bring in Ryan Mink. He uh, works for BaltimoreRavens.com. He writes about those Baltimore Ravens we saw here in Denver yesterday. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Ryan, let's, uh, let's deal with something that's worse than the Baltimore Ravens loss yesterday because it's just one game. Uh, you won't have Terrell, or The Ravens won't have Terrell Suggs for any more games this year. Uh, we just talked about Marshawn Lynch and his impact in the Seattle Seahawks locker room. What is Terrell Suggs' impact on this team, not just on the field but off the field as well? Yeah, well, on the field, uh, you know, he's uh, one of the best edge setters and pass rushers in the game. I mean, it, in terms of combo guys, you know, there are better pass rushers and there are better edge setters, but nobody does it both really quite as well as Terrell Suggs. So that's a big hit on the field. Uh, off the field, I mean, this guy is, is definitely one of the defensive leaders. He's from the old guard, you know. Ray Lewis is gone, Ed Reed is gone, Hawaii Nada now is the Detroit. Scott Suggs is really the last member of that of that defense uh, back in the day. And, and not only is he a leader in terms of his, you know, the length of his career, but he's a guy that keeps everybody really loose. He's very passionate, very fired up on game days when a lot of the Ravens newer, bigger stars like Jimmy Smith. T.J. Medley are very quiet, kind of shy of guys. Uh, Suggs was the guy, you know, with Ray Lewis going, he would get him pumped up on game day. Keeping it on the injury front, uh, Eugene Monroe was out with a concussion yesterday. Number one, do we know about how, how long he'll be out? And what are the plans, uh, if he's going to be out for an extended period of time, uh, keeping Joe Flacco upright? The Broncos certainly had uh, a lot of success getting after the quarterback yeah, nine yesterday. quarterback hits yesterday. Yeah, uh, no word yet on, on how severe Eugene Monroe's concussion is. Um, obviously, the NFL these days play things pretty safe. Um, you know, I, I, did, I know Eugene did take the flight here to Oakland. Uh, he is with the team, so uh, he'll be a guy I think that will be monitored throughout the week. You just don't know it's concussion. You know, you, don't, you never know until a couple days later, a few days later, when they're going to be able to get out on the practice field. But uh, I agree. I mean, definitely they need all the help they can get on that offensive line. Uh, but but I think that what also impacted things with the offensive line yesterday were a number of factors. They, they couldn't get the run game going. That put them in a lot of second and third and long situations. And then you're facing two Pro Bowl outside linebackers there uh, in Denver. And, and those guys, when they're able to pin their ears back, it's going to be hell on just about any offensive tackle that's out there. When the Broncos lost to the Ravens in the playoffs, a lot of guys in the Broncos locker room said, we were the better team even though we lost the game. When the Ravens came here during the regular season and Manning blew out the Ravens, everyone would agree the Broncos were the better team. From your experience in the locker room yesterday, even though the Ravens lost, did they walk away feeling they were the better team? That's a good question. I don't know if they felt like they were the better team. I think they, uh, I think it was pretty evenly matched, to be honest. I mean, both defenses dominated, both offenses struggled and had trouble protecting their quarterback. I mean, it was almost a mirror image of each other. I, I think the Ravens walked away feeling like this was a game we definitely could have had, you know, and that's what made it painful is that they could have certainly won that game. I mean, if, it, if it's not for the Joe Flacco pick six, I'm not sure the Broncos would have scored again in that game. I mean, they were getting nothing going. They were getting absolutely stuffed at that point in the third quarter. So uh, it was definitely a game the Ravens could win, and obviously with the last final minute drive, uh, and that's what that's what hurts more than saying, "Oh, we were the better team." Peter King, I believe, picked the Ravens to win the Super Bowl, and you know, at the end of the day, it's. You know, it's only a prediction, doesn't mean a whole lot because the season hadn't even started at that point. But I think for a lot of people, the Ravens, the sexy pick to win the Super Bowl. Now that Suggs is gone, are they still the pick in your mind? Well, I, you know, Steve Bashotti signs my check, so I'm obviously not going to deviate from that. Um, I, I do think the Ravens, you know, you know to, to win the Super Bowl, that's just anybody, that's just blowing hot air, really. But to say that they're going to be a playoff team, absolutely. And then once this team gets in the playoffs, they have a track record of winning in the playoffs. They are very, very tough out at that time of year. So I, I think it, it's not changed for me that this team is a playoff-bound roster and a playoff-bound team. And once they're there, Joe Flash is going to win some games. So, yeah, that's not changed. I think the Ravens have 
solutions for Terrell Suggs. You know, nobody's going to be as good as Terrell Suggs, but I think Courtney Upshaw will see more snaps. Elvis Steverville is going to have to be more of an all-around linebacker, kind of like he was in Denver when he was starting 16 games every year and playing more snaps than just a situational pass rusher. So I think they, they can offset the loss of Suggs, who, by the way, missed the first eight games of the 2012 Super Bowl year. So they've done this before and had success. So I think, yes, the Ravens are still very much a Super Bowl contender. Ryan, how about the loss of Gary Kubiak? I know it's a small sample so far, but but is the Ravens' offense feeling the loss of Kubiak, and if so, how much? I think it's too early to tell. I mean, uh, the, the offense struggled in week one last year with Kubiak there <laughs> in his first game, uh, so in a, in a brutal loss to the Bengals. Um, so I would say it's too early to tell. I mean, I think Denver's defense is very good, and I think when we look back on it at the end of the season, it's going to look that way as well. And, and you're going to say, wow, you know, that, that doesn't look so awful anymore. Um, but I, I do think this offense is going to obviously take a little bit of time to adjust to Mark Chesson, even though he's running things a lot like CBS did. Um, and, and I think it'll be just fine. I mean, once they start running the ball a little bit better behind this offensive line, which should be the, the strongest point on the team, once they can run the ball better, that'll help everything out. Ryan, really appreciate your time. Uh, we might be talking to you again before the playoffs start, okay? All right, sounds good. Thank you very much. All right, Ryan Mink of BaltimoreRavens.com. That segment brought to you by John Owe Chevrolet, Colorado's number one Chevy dealer. When you go to buy a car, what do you really want? You probably want a lot of cars to choose from. And you want the dealership's best price. Not some starting price or target price. The best price. And you want it immediately, not after hours of negotiating. And you want a salesperson who doesn't get paid more if you spend more. Because, well, you don't want to spend more. Well, you're in luck. John Elway wants all of those things, too. Better yet, John Elway wants you to have all of those things, too. Come see us or click on johnelwaychevrolet.com.